This is a rather quick video that I just wanted to throw together on a project I did with the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I think it might have been a couple months ago. There is a local nonprofit radio station that uh, has a radiothon, it's because they're a nonprofit, and uh, their radiothon has a, a setup where they have some phones in a closet. And the phones have a microphone that's connected to the live audio on the radio station. And when people call in to make a donation, the phone goes off. And that's pretty cool. And back in the old days when telephones were the main way that people would call in and make donations, that was pretty amazing. But nowadays, a lot of people use the internet because it's easy to just pop online and, and make a donation. And you can use your credit card. You don't have to call someone and give it through the, through the phone or tell them your address or anything. So anyway... I, I uh, know a lot of the people that work at this radio station, and I thought to myself, why, why not figure out some way to make it so that when there's an online donation, people can hear it on the radio? And uh, they use a system for this that, that just kicks out an email. There's no API, at least no free API, that we could use to get a notification. So I had to figure out a way to get an email. So we would check an email inbox, and when there's a new email with a donation, then I wanted to do something. And I figured out that these little call bells are pretty cheap and make a great little sound that's about comparable to the sound of the phones ringing in that closet that they put them all in. So I got to work building this bell solution and I figured the Raspberry Pi can control a thing that makes the bell ding. And uh, I kind of MacGyvered and hacked my way around this whole thing. You can see that I'm uh, getting these couple rails of wood to hold things together. I don't, uh, well, I should say I, I didn't have a 3D printer. And having a 3D printer, I could have printed a case that holds all this stuff together quite nicely. Um, but I didn't have one at the time. I, I actually just got it this week. So expect some cool new Pi projects coming soon for that. But anyway, since I didn't have it, I had to kind of figure out how to hack things together. And this was in the middle of the Radiothon. I was like, hey, I want to help these people out. So I, that's when I started on this project. And uh, this was late one night, uh, the night before the last day of the Radiothon. I wanted to get it ready for the next morning so that I could drop it off and they could use it. And so I, I kind of did all this work, flying in the dark, uh, shooting from the hip. You can see I'm using my, my linesman's pliers here just to to bend this piece of metal that I I was trying to figure out how do I get from a servo arm, which you can see that little little dot down there that's next to the orange wires, uh, that's attached to a servo that I attached to the Pi. I'm gonna get that servo arm to slap the bell top. And to do that, I was like, well, I, I don't have a 3D printer, so I can't build a little plastic armature. And I got nothing else in my house that really does that. So I grabbed a piece of uh, sheet metal that I had laying around, I cut a strip of it, and I did what you're seeing here. Kind of made a way for it to attach to the Raspberry Pi. And uh, after I did that, I, I was able to get the actual physical linkages all working together so that the Pi could uh, trigger the servo to hit it. And um, it, it just involved a lot of tweaking. So you can see here, I, you know, I had to bend it a bunch of different ways to get it to translate from a horizontal position uh, that the servo was mounted in up above the bell and slap the top of it. And of course, I'm, I'm saying slap the bell. It's, it's not like someone's actually slapping it, but I thought that the way that this little flap that I had of metal hit the top was more like a slap than a, than a standard one-fingered ding. Um, so anyways, I, I had to fit everything together. You can see here that I kind of positioned everything by hand. This was completely eyeballing, completely shooting through the hip. And if I were going to do this project again and I had more time, remember I was doing this like late at night when I had the idea, the, the day of the Radiothon. If I had more time, I would, I would do a lot more planning and probably build a little bit better of a mount. Uh, but I was using the things I had on hand. The hardware store was closed, so I couldn't buy any parts or anything. And uh, once I got it together, it <laughs> actually worked. And I, I was kind of surprised that the servo is strong enough to, to move that little armature and then get back into position for another ding and uh, the one problem of course is the bell was moving so i taped that down with some good old gaff tape and then i made a nice label for it to christen it ye old bell slapper by jeff kierling of course it was renamed uh the it's a religious nonprofit that i i was doing this for and they renamed it clarence after the angel uh in it's a wonderful life. And uh, every time that the bell rings now, they say an angel gets its wings or an online donation comes in. 
Uh, so anyways, that was the hardware side of this build, and uh, I'm also going to do a screencast of the software side of things as well. Now that I have a working Pi Bell Slapper hardware unit, I need to be able to control it, and I wanted to be able to send uh, a ding out to the world any time that an email would come in, an email notification about a new donation. So I wrote this open source Pi Bell Slapper project. And uh, you can see the tagline is the king of ding. Anyways, the readme contains pretty much everything that I've talked about for the hardware build side, a nice fancy picture of it. Um, but then to actually get the Pi to start slapping it, you need the software. And so uh, you can clone this project to your Pi, install the GPIO library that you need for Python controlling it, and then run this command, bellslap.py. And what that's going to do is make the servo kind of move one way, then move the other way, and then go back to the original again. And when you do this the first time, I wouldn't have everything connected together, just have the servo sitting by itself, because you're going to need to mark on the servo where things move, and you might need to tweak the bell slap script, which uh, for my particular unit, um, I start it by zeroing the duty cycle, then I go to 12, 11, 12, and that kind of makes sure that it's up, and then it slaps down on 11, and then it goes back up again for 12 to make sure that it doesn't like sit and rest on top of the bell. Uh, another interesting thing to note is that um, the Pi is not, the Pi's GPIO pins are not rated really for like servo controls and things. And if you're doing something like building a medical device that was drilling into someone's skin, I think I'd be a lot more careful and precise and probably use a little bit more expensive servo and probably not connect it directly through a Raspberry Pi like I did. Uh, one other thing that you will need to do that I didn't mention earlier is uh, pull one of the orange wire out of the little three, three pin DuPont female connector. And you can use like a teeny tiny screwdriver or something to stick, stick it into the end of the DuPont into the little opening on the side here. And then you can pull the wire out uh, with the, the male DuPont or the, the female DuPont connector attached to it and then put it into another uh, a DuPont sleeve like I have here, a female sleeve. However, if you don't do that, you can still just attach the wire directly to the GPI open uh, or you can MacGyver it and do it however you want because that's part of the fun of this. You can see that this is not a professional presentation whatsoever, but it did its job and it was on the radio, so it didn't matter at all what it looked like. And the last part of this was trying to get email notifications to make the bell slap. So I actually built a little Python script called emailcheck.py, and the instructions are here for if you want to, to install that. And all it needs is an IMAP email client address. I think it was Gmail that we used for this one, and we enabled IMAP on Gmail. And all it does, I'll go up to the script, emailcheck.py. Um, it will uh, look at a configuration file, config.yaml, with your email account information and the conditions that we're going to check for before it dings the bell on a new message. So it, look, it reads in that configuration file, it logs into the email server, it sees if there are any new messages in the inbox here, um, and then it will check if the from address contains what you expect it to and the subject contains what you expect it to. It will print a message to the screen saying that it found the matching email, and then it will call the slap the bell uh, function from that bell slap uh, Python library that we created earlier. So that is pretty much it. This can be a lot more robust. Remember that this whole project was done in the course of, I believe, two days, three days, something like that. I hope that this was an entertaining quick video, and uh, if you like what you saw here, let me know. Until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling.